Hey, Lynn, I got you. Can you hear me? Can yep. you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Great. Mike, I got you. Can you hear us okay? Mike Reardon. Hi, everyone. Hi. Karen D, I I got you. Can you unmute and check? There we go. You good? Can you hear me now? Mike, if you can hear me, uh, it still says connecting to audio. Maybe try uh, disconnecting completely and coming back in. Dennis, microphone check, please. You're still muted, Dennis. How about now? Perfect, I got you, thank you. Thank you. Paul, I see you popped in. Can you unmute and give me a test, please? I'm mute. I unmuted it. But okay. it's still waiting. I got you now, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, but I don't have any. I can't see anything but myself. And it's, I'm still getting the uh, little waiting signal. All right, give it a bit to connect. We can see you and hear you fine. Oh, okay. I can hear you, I can't, I can't see anybody though.
<laughs> Testing. Good. I got you, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Good afternoon. How's Rick? Hey, Rick. I got hey, you. Hey, what's happening? Warm greetings to all. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get a camera, Rick. Get new laptops okay. in about two weeks, firm wide. Okay. Only took 11 years. <laughs> Deputy Mayor, could you test, please? Can you hear me? Let me change my name there. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I have uh, one o'clock. All right, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. I was just grabbing a quick sip of water. Right, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to our June 3rd council meeting. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can remain standing for our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today in the service of our community. We ask that you bring peace and understanding to the world, that you put an end to the anger and violence that has divided our nation for so many generations, so that all of our children and our children's children may have the opportunity to grow up safe and secure and to fully enjoy all of the great opportunities that our nation has to offer. Amen. 
<clears throat> Lynn, can you read the open public meetings announcement? This is to advise the meeting notices covering this meeting have been sent and posted as required under the Open Public Meetings Act. Perfect. Uh, can we have uh, approval of the May 20th Council Minute meetings? Can we have a motion and a second? Done it. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Thierry? Is Paul, are you there? I think Paul's muted. Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Can we have uh, approval of payroll and requisition lists and operating expenses? Uh, can we have a motion and second? I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Latiri? Yes. 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 Haney? Yes. Lucre? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. I'd like at this time to open it up for public comment. This is public comment on agenda items only. So if you, uh, if you want to speak, go ahead and unmute yourself uh, and give your name and full address. Meanwhile, I'll start scrolling through the list here to see if anybody's trying to get our attention. Susan Lavari, go ahead. Um, I want to, um, I'm a vendor at your farmer's market, um, and I had sent a letter to <coughs> the, um, the committee, and I would like to read you the letter because I think it would be beneficial in helping you so decide what you're planning to, yes? And if I could, right now, this open is for stuff on the agenda. There's a second open at the end of the meeting that is actually for all comments and all ideas. So if you don't mind, if you could hold your oh, letter, then it would be the appropriate time to read it. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. It's fine. Jim, do we see any other comment? Deputy Mayor, I do not. All right, perfect. Then we're going to close uh, public comment at this time. And actually, if council wouldn't mind, I'd actually like to deviate from the agenda for a second to talk about short-term rental bans. Um, I know there's a number of people who are here that are very interested in that. Um, I know council had discussed talking about this later in the council manager, but um, I, I feel it'd be appropriate to kind of give some people some closure and some decisions. Uh, we're at the point in time when the city needs to take a decision to move forward. We're one of the last communities in South Jersey to still have a ban that's in place. We're seeing positive data and downward trends in the number of COVID-19 cases, and especially in the hospitalizations in New Jersey. I just got information from the governor yesterday that we are number one, New Jersey is number one in the country for COVID-19 testing, so we are making some good progress there. The city numbers right now are holding steady. The last report we got is that we have 25 cases and one death. One of the things I want to remind people about is just because we are listed at 25 cases doesn't mean that all 25 of those cases are active. Um, after a period of two or three weeks, a number of people do recover, but those recovery numbers don't get reported to us. The other thing that's important to know about the data is that those 25 people may or may not live in Brigantine. If they were here or have a connection to Brigantine, that number gets reported in Brigantine and where they live. Um, there are many people in our community that can no longer financially afford to just sit home and wait for things to get better. We need to take action. We need to continue our efforts to move the city forward. We have taken the last two weeks to communicate with the people of our community. We have put letters online. 
We put letters in the local newspaper. Um, council has responded to hundreds of emails and, and a number of phone calls. We have done everything in our power to include people in this important decision. At this time, I would like to call for a vote to lift the short-term rental ban in Brigantine effective immediately. Can we have a motion and a second? I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'd like to have roll call. You? Yes. Thierry? Lettieri? Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Uh, I certainly support lifting the ban, so I'm going to vote yes. I will have some comments later in the meeting um, about what happens next. So, yes. Reardon? Yes, I'd like just to say uh, thank you to all the um, short-term rental homeowners, the VRBO representatives, the realtors, uh, uh, with working with all of them, contacting ahead, uh, them all last week and um, with their understanding and what was going on. And uh, I think uh, we were all on the same page going forward. So I definitely vote yes. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Sarah. I would like to thank council for their hard work on this decision and thank the community for working with us. None of this has been easy. And um, there's a lot of pressure from both ends. And I think one of the most important parts is for as many people who were looking to have this open, there was a number of people in the community who, who were not quite ready. And over the last two weeks, we had a lot of good conversations and there's a lot of people who sent us emails that actually laid out specific information, specific data, how it specifically impacts them financially and being able to share that information with the community helped people to come together to make a good decision. So I wanna thank everybody for the process. And I vote yes. Motion carried. Uh, Jim, since we did this through executive order at the end of the meeting, can you update that executive order to end the ban? Yes, Mayor, I will. And uh, as soon as the meeting's over, I'll have it released uh, to the public via our social media and I'll make sure it gets forwarded to the online marketplaces and all the realtors uh, before close of business today. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of council, we appreciate that. I'd like to move back to our regular agenda. Uh, we have ordinance number three of 2020, which is a public hearing and adoption. It is the removal of handicapped parking space at 107 21st Street South. Uh, do we have a motion and second? No moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Lettieri? Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carry. All right, we have a uh, Ordinance number four of 2020, which is a public hearing and an adoption. Uh, this is an adopting an amendment redevelopment plan for the Civic Center redevelopment area uh, known as Block 2901, Lot 5. Uh, can we have a motion and second? I'll make that motion. Second. To give some people some background on this, this is part of Brigantine's plan to move forward with affordable housing. Uh, we worked it out with COA, with the Coalition for Affordable Housing, to develop affordable housing for veterans here in our community. It's a program that we're very proud of. Um, the recommendations that come to us in this amendment are from the Joint Land Use Board. And basically this deals with uh, amending the setbacks, the parking requirements, and the site coverage for the area to make sure that we can adequately um, move the project forward to have good housing for our veterans. Um, can we have, uh, I guess, a roll call? Uh, we have to have a public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. You're correct. Yeah. Can we open it up for a public hearing? Thank you, Lynn. Any uh, comments from the public? Please unmute yourself or uh, use the raised hand feature and we'll get to you.
Deputy Mayor, I don't see anybody uh, looking to make public comment. All right, so then let's close uh, the public portion at this time. Uh, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Amy? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. And actually, if you don't mind, Lynn, you just reminded me, I believe ordinance number three for the removal of a handicap spot was also supposed to be a public hearing. Um, can we, I guess, can we just open it up for public hearing at this time if anybody wants to comment on that? All right, so we'll open it up for, this is going back to the removal, removal of the handicap parking space at 107 21st Street South. Uh, we'll open it up for public comment. I see none, Deputy Mayor. All right, seeing none, can we close public comment? Uh, Lynn, do we need to vote again on that or are we good? We're good. All right, thank you. <clears throat> All right, we'll move on to resolution 2020-101. This is a rental inspection fee refund. Can we have a motion and second? So move. Second. Any discussion? We have roll call. Ew. Yes. Thierry. Yes. Amy. Yes. DeLucre. Yes. Reardon. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah. Yes. Motion carried. All right, next up we have resolution 2020-102. This is a rental inspection uh, fee refund. Can we have a motion and second? So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Latiri? Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Reardon? Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, we have resolution 2020-103. This is CER class cancellation refunds. Can we have a motion and second? So move. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? <clears throat> yeah. The pollen is so bad today. My voice is going. Sorry. Absolutely. Latiri. Yes. Haney. Yes. DeLucre. Yes. Reardon. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah. Yes. Motion carry. Uh, if you don't mind, can you give me one second? Uh, one of my daughters needs to help. I apologize. Give me one second. <clears throat> All right, we're all good. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> um, all right, next up we have our consent agenda. Uh, just a reminder that things on the consent agenda may be postponed or canceled due to changing conditions. Uh, we have a community Presbyterian Church raffle license number 917. Uh, we have a, I guess, motion and second? I'll make that motion. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, roll call. You? Yes. Terry? Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. All right, next up we have our uh, council manager committee discussions. Uh, Jim, do you have any updates for us? I'll wait till uh, after council's finished. Make sure All right, perfect, thank you. I'll start with uh, first ward, Councilwoman Karen Bue. Hi, I had 
I'd like to just let everybody know the Lynx is looking great. The grounds crew is doing a fabulous job uh, with everything, getting the course in great shape. There are lots of golfers coming out now that we're allowing foursomes to go out. And just remind everybody who is in the neighborhood, please, unless you are golfing, you need to stay off the golf course. You can't be walking your dogs. You can't be riding your bikes on the paths. It can be very, very dangerous out there. The course is for golfers only. And we would really appreciate it if you would respect our, the, the golf course with their wishes in that respect. Um, we have been having lots of discussions about the farmer's market. We, um, John Doring and I were at North School last week looking at the possibility of moving the market to North School parking lot for this year. Um, there are, we've looked at several other sites around the island and we feel at this point in time to have a safe, socially distant market, we will more than likely be using North School parking lot. Um, since the governor just um, announced his phase two plan, which should go into effect on June, June 15th, we are seriously consider, oh, and in that new, phase two, he will allow crafters and artists to join farmers markets. Um, in that case, we are seriously looking at waiting until the following week, June 20th, at least June 20th, and hopefully be able to have a walkthrough market at that time. We had uh, previously considered having four weeks of a drive-through market, and then uh, transition into a safe, safe distanced uh, walkthrough market. But as our numbers are looking better, we are cautiously optimistic that we will be able to start, hopefully by June 20th, if not the following week, to have our, uh, ooh, that wind is really picking up, to have our walkthrough market. And I just want to tell everybody, be careful. That there's a really strong line, of, strong line of storms coming through right now. So if you've got pillows on your porch or flags out there, go get them in. But we will um, be talking more about the market. And uh, in the next few days, hopefully we can make a final decision. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, if I could. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, Karen, I don't know if you want to have uh, some follow-up from Jeanette Kessler now. Uh, okay, while yes, yes, that would be good. Thank you. Okay, Jeanette, you're up. Thanks, Jim. Um, I just wanted to take a second to thank the Farmers Market Committee who has worked so hardly on various different proposals um, and we, we didn't always agree, um, but we are, all have the same goal in mind, which is to have a safe and successful summer in Brigantine. And part of that is our farmer's market. And I also want to thank the city council members for um, taking the time to consider all the options, review all the options. And we, uh, we hope that we can open this year um, at North School and we look forward to next year back at Hanneman Park. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Jeanette, for working so hard with us. Yeah, I'd really like to take an opportunity to thank Jeanette and, and Karen and our whole uh, Farmers Market Committee. There's been a lot of thought, a lot of discussion. We've, we've had some good meetings, and um, I think all of that put the city in a good position to, to get back to the market we all know and love. So thank you all, one, for your patience, and two, for your hard work in putting this together. Um, next up, can we move to uh, Ward 2, Councilman Paul Letiri. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to uh, John Doring and his crew on, for, in here. for opening up uh, the seawall promenade uh, as promptly as he said he would do it. His staff worked diligently yesterday from 7 a.m. until uh, the end of the workday to clean it up and get rid of the sand. It's now available for use. Um, I just asked that as a reminder to follow the safety guidelines and practice some safe distancing while you're up there. 
for the benefit for your benefit and for the benefit of those around you. Uh, that's all I have right now. All right, perfect. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next up, we have uh, Dennis Saney, our third ward councilman. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I'd like to obviously second those sentiments of Paul. As everybody knows, I've been trying to get that wall open, and uh, I think it should have done a while ago. But let's enjoy it. Um, I wanted to uh, first just uh, address, uh, just state that it was an honor to address briefly uh, a crowd. There was actually two crowds that we had for Memorial Day ceremony, which was on uh, Memorial Day being on the 25th and on the 24th. We put the wreaths out and honored those brave young Americans, all of them that lost, have lost their lives and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. There were uh, very good crowds at both 11 a.m. and 12 noon. Um, I want to thank uh, Jim Mackey for the uh, efforts that he put into it, the Legion, the VFW, everybody involved. I, I know I'm not going to be able to touch on everybody there. Uh, Frank R. Bugler, who did two, uh, came out twice to, uh, for the crowd. And also, I just uh, want to give another shout out to Mr. Williams, our, uh, our World War II veteran who was a bombardier. And uh, he showed up for the 12 o'clock meeting. And uh, he's, I believe it's, I think he said he was 96 or going on 96. So uh, God bless him. It's great to see him all the time. Uh, briefly, regarding Ace Hardware, they've uh, increased their capacity uh, from what they did have. So that's a good thing. I've actually uh, got a couple calls out there. I spoke to the general manager today and along with the uh, manager who I also spoke to, uh, to try and, uh, I get up as close to, they were allowed 50% capacity. So uh, Mr. Smith, the owner is, uh, hopefully I'll be hearing from him soon. There is a message out for him to, uh, uh, for him to contact me. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention, uh, uh, the atrocious acts that are going on in our country right now. There was the death of this young man, George Floyd, just totally unconscionable what happened. I, I was, I did 24 years in the New Jersey State Police as a trooper and a detective, and every single law enforcement officer I have ever known, I can vouch for, just is just appalled and just by that disgusting behavior that uh, I know he deserves his, uh, his fair trial and those and the others involved, but every once in a while you see something and you say, my God, that looks just indefensible. And I, I'm not, I don't want to go no further than that because he does deserve his, uh, his, his uh, due, due process and everything. Um, but I just, regarding our own police department, I just know that them and all our, all the guys, all the men and women that I work with throughout the years, there's so many good deeds that have been done for people of all race, color, creeds. Please, everybody, remember that. I know, uh, I know Rich Casamano, our chief, would agree with, agree with me on that, as well as uh, every, all the uh, fine men and women of our local police department. Uh, the other thing uh, that I want to talk about was uh, our short-term rental, uh, short rental ban, which just got listed, lifted today. Uh, as uh, many might know, uh, I tried, um, tried to get that lifted last week. Uh, I thought that really we were in solid footing to have that done. Uh, we had like over 100 people on our uh, participants at our last Zoom meeting last week. As Vince stated earlier, uh, I had over 200 emails on it, and I guess we all got, most of us, if not all of us, got those same emails uh, along with all the follow-ups uh, that we got. And um, I know, Vince, you also put something on uh, one, of the social, one of the major social media networks uh, talking about our, uh, lift, uh, discussing it come our June 3rd meeting. And... Uh, it's getting a kind of crazy windy over here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, on our June 3rd meeting, there were comments on that. And there was, uh, I don't know if it was around 114 or so. And the vast majority of those said, we need to lift it now and do something. Obviously, there's opposing thoughts, but the great majority of them wanted to have it open. Um, we have uh, locally, uh, Atlantic City uh, lifted theirs Friday, May 29th. Margate was open before that. This is regarding short-term rentals, uh, May 11th. Uh, and then uh, as far as to the south of us, Saturday, May 30th was Ocean City. Uh, Seattle City was May 30th. Wildwood and North Wildwood, May 26th. There's other towns. I won't get into the other towns, but uh, many of these towns, Atlantic City and Ocean City, for instance, and uh, Margate, all close to us. Uh, 
they have, I would, I think I'd be safe in saying that they have much higher density. Um, I, I know that I spoke to Vince uh, and I, prior to this, and I thought maybe we were making some headway um, and I sent him, he asked me to send him some links and different things to look into it. And then there was the, uh, there was the posting, which I spoke about earlier. Uh, I believe that we were on solid ground to have an emergency meeting. It was emergent circumstances, obviously, and it was certainly of the public interest. I looked at the uh, Open Public Meetings Act and looked at the relative statutes to that, and I believe we were on firm ground to hold that emergency meeting, and we should have done it uh, ASAP after our last meeting, and possibly the best, I mean, I believe the best day would have been Wednesday right after Memorial Day. Uh, there's all kinds of studies out there and there's information, uh, but when it really comes down to this, we're uh, uh, herd immunity, population immunity, whatever you wanna speak about. This COVID-19, yes, it's taken many, many lives, uh, particularly our elderly who are in assisted living and nursing homes and, and also, uh, uh, also people with pre-existing conditions where their immune system is, is down. However, this is nothing like the Spanish flu, we're going back in time 100 years ago, where 675,000 Americans lost their lives when our population was about 103 million. Our now, population now is about roughly 330 million. So the percentage and the, and the lives that it took, young, many, live, uh, many were young people, 20 to 40 years of age. They brought it home from World War I and it spread and it, and it took the lives of many young Americans, more than half, more than half were 20 to, uh, were 20 to 40 years old. So um, I reached out for everybody. I did text everybody. I mean, I, I emailed everybody back who, who got a hold of me, said that I was working on it as I spoke, and that was true and accurate. I tried my very, very best uh, to get my thoughts out there and get it open last week. I thought it was a beautiful weekend. It would have been awesome to have been open last weekend. We were in firm ground to get it done. I will never really understand why we didn't, uh, on top of everything else, with the uh, horrendous, despicable behavior in Atlantic City, which I might add, Atlantic City PD, I worked hand in hand with them as a detective and when I was a trooper on the expressway. And they got a fine group of men and women, and they were highly, re highly trained and they react quite well to uh, dangerous emergency situations. So between them, I heard the state police were in there and also county SWAT team. They, they, they did a good job responding to that. But not to get in a tangent on that, people who were, stay, who were here could have stayed for a couple of days and maybe knowing what's going on in, in Atlantic City and a major, major cities like Philadelphia, for example, maybe they just even would have wanted to stay an extra night as it was. So that's just one further thing. I am glad it's lifted. I wish everybody a great summer and have fun, be safe. I hope we can get back to normal as quick as possible. I do not agree with uh, the steps and phases that the governor's got going on. I mean, we got people being, Big Brother has arrived. George Orwell, 1984, has come to life. We look up in Bel Belmar, uh, Belmar, New Jersey, the one by Philly. They've got people getting photographed or with a camera uh, for, the, for the awful crime of working out and conditioning and exercising. I mean, what, what has it come to? We've got restrictive things on religious uh, freedom of religion. It's just, uh, it, it's got to it's speed up and it pretty much has got to end. This is going to get through, and so be it. God bless everybody. That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dennis. I appreciate you sharing your comments and your thoughts. And, you know, I think it's important for people to have um, the ability to express their ideas, you know, even if they're different ideas from other members of the council. And that's really the part of our American system is to make sure that people's ideas are heard and that we come together and form a consensus of opinion and then move forward with those ideas. You know, I do want to put some of the information that was presented in a little bit of context. Um, when we think about Brigantine, we have a population of somewhere between seven and 9,000 residents. The number of emails we received was a little over 200. Um, I actually took the time to respond to almost every single email that was sent to us. Um, of those 200 plus emails, uh, 68 of them had identified as being uh, people who rented uh, short-term rentals here in Brigantine. The rest had identified as being vacationers here in the community. So I don't know that those 200 plus emails were a real representation of the people who live here in Brigantine. 
Um, I think it's important because our community is definitely expanded. You know, we are a big second homeowner community and our local tourism relies on um, those visitors who come here. But I can tell you that um, I, along with a number of people of council, have spoke to people who live here in the community who two weeks ago weren't ready. Uh, even as far as yesterday, um, I spent a good four hours on the phone talking to people in the community to answer their questions, to let them know where we are, why we're moving forward. And it's not just a decision that we as a council need to make. It's a decision that the community itself needs to be comfortable with. And people weren't comfortable with that. People did not know uh, what was going on. As much as we as council members pay attention to what's going on in the city, a lot of people are just struggling to live their lives. You know, they rely on us to make good decisions and to move forward, but to also notify them when these important decisions are being made. And that's why we took steps to communicate with the community. You know, and one of the biggest frustrations I think that many of us have is that government moves very slow. But I can tell you that in some instances, government moves slow for a reason. It's to make sure that the community is involved, to make sure the community knows what's going on so we can make good decisions and we can move together um, as a whole. So I think we need to put some of that in perspective as we look forward. And, and I can tell you there was many people who were worried about opening up short-term rentals who believe that we are moving too fast, but also said that they trusted our judgment. If we felt that we were in a position to move the economy forward, then they would trust that judgment. You know, and I think that's an important part of trust. And I think the thing we have to remember too is just because things move forward, just because things open up, doesn't mean the threat of COVID-19 has, has diminished. You know, the, the trends look good, the data looks good right now, but this is a virus and we, we can't predict how it's going to act. The only thing that we can do, and I think Dennis touched on this really well, is give people the ability to make decisions in their own lives. And that's what we're trying to get to. Um, and to deviate a little bit, yesterday I had an opportunity where um, I was able to be on a conference call with a number of mayors across South Jersey to speak with the governor. And one of the really good, um, I'm sorry, to speak with the governor's administration. And one of the really good things that came out of that meeting, and it's the first time we're starting to see this, is that the governor is starting to get to a point where he is ready to start giving decision-making power back to the local governments. You know, for a long time, and we've heard that frustration that the governor has taken too much power. Well, yesterday, the trend seemed to be that the governor wants individual communities, when, when he believes things are ready, to start making those decisions because where we are in South Jersey is not where they are in North Jersey. So the best way to do that is to let our, our communities, our counties and our regions make those decisions for themselves. So we wanna keep pushing towards that. We wanna make sure that we have those decision-making abilities and that we include the community in those decisions. You know, us as council members, our job is to represent the community. So we need to make sure that we spend as much time listening to them as we do um, you know, talking and taking action. Uh, if we could, I'd like to go to Councilman Rick DeLucre, uh, update on the fourth ward, and I know he had some comments about the short-term rental ban. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, on the short-term rental, and indulge me for a second um, before I get specifically to that. I was really disappointed over the weekend. I was at one of the local businesses where the employees were fully compliant. They were wearing the personal protection equipment. The business is a takeout business and was posted that uh, in order to get service at the window, you needed to have a face mask. As I was in line, I saw the person, couple ahead of me, no face masks, uh, and clearly smirking and, and mocking those around them who did have face masks on for whatever reason. Uh, after they were served, uh, they were sitting down and a couple other people came walking by intending to get in line. And the people sitting down said to them, hey, hey we're, laughingly, where's your face mask? And the response from the people coming up was, uh, we're over that. that. That to me is, it's depressing, but it's also sickening because we aren't over it. it and this does tie in with, with the rentals. And the people who, were, who offer their comments to council, their emails and other comments, and the people I've spoken to, overwhelmingly, you know, reasonable people, and the points they made were reasonable in terms of trying to balance their uh, necessary economic interests and the interests that we as a council have to try and protect in the city as a whole. The mentality that was on display uh, at that takeout was, was quite different. 
the the reference point that came to me later the following day actually uh was when i heard the the pope pope francis's homily for pentecost sunday and it wasn't directed specifically to the pandemic but he did point out and it's available online i, I encourage people to read it. it's not just for catholics the, the message he had is applicable i think across the board but with respect to the pandemic he said if we are going to be unified and if we're going to be together we have to fight against three main evils. Those are narcissism, victimhood, and pessimism. Narcissism, I think we know, that's the mentality that it's all about me. Victimhood is, I going to, you're gonna take every imposition as if it was unfair and unjustified and an imposition on you personally. And pessimism says, what's the point? You know, nothing's getting any better or no one has any answers. That that mentality, I think, was on display uh, in that scene that I described at the takeout. The the virus is still here. Um, Vince and I believe Mike earlier in the meeting pointed out we do have some good numbers. We have in New Jersey uh, the gross numbers are trending downward. The rate of reproduction, which is the you know number of people on average that are infected by a person who has the virus, is way down. And that's all good. And you know what? There's a cause and effect to that. That is the result of the measures that were taken and are still being taken in New Jersey, both at the state level and down to our local level. To say that's not the case is, is foolish and it's delusional thinking. The virus is still with us, but it can be controlled and we know it and we know the measures that need to be taken to control it. It's not going to go away because we declare our will that you know, we, we don't recognize the virus any longer. We don't like it and we're stronger than the virus or any nonsensical childish responses like that. It's a virus. It does not care about your will. It knows nothing. It doesn't need to know anything. It knows only that if it's in a body and it gets spread to another body, good chance of further infection. And the more transactions you have of that type, the further it spreads. It's not that complicated. So what has this to do with the short-term rentals? Um, as I mentioned, the good news is overwhelmingly the people who are, and mostly we spoke to people or I spoke to people who are owners of properties that rent, but also some who are renters. Uh, they seem to get it and they're reasonable people. And I believe that they will follow the necessary measures to minimize the risk. You can't eliminate it, but you certainly can minimize it. I spoke last night to uh, one property owner who, was a modest person, so I won't name him here publicly, but I was very gratified to hear, he owns a couple of rental properties, that his plan, which he's already put into effect, is to stock his properties with um, disposable masks to have, and he's arranged already, for cleaning service, following the guidelines that are being put out by a number of organizations that handle rental properties, to have his properties cleaned fully, both before and after each tenancy, and to be hands-on in making sure that his tenants understand the restrictions that are going to apply to as time goes on and they'll change but uh at whatever time they happen to be in the rental property those restrictions that are applicable in town at that time so that to me is gratifying that's a sign of somebody who gets it and is stepping up and what i i fervently pray is that the people both the landlords and the tenants who are now going to be coming back to our town and we're delighted to see them uh, not just for business reasons, you know, it, it gives the town life, but if, if you're not doing intelligent, responsible things, if you're not following the very simple and easy to follow guidelines and restrictions, you're not helping anyone and you're hurting the town. And even if, you know, in the aggregate, it, and God, we hope this is the case, it, it's not so serious that it leads us to a, a resurge in the amount of infections. Uh, it, there's no justification for doing it. You know, just follow the restrictions. It's not about any one person and it's not about, you know, pontificating on what you believe to be your constitutional rights. It's, we're a community. And when you don't follow these simple rules, you're hurting your community and quite possibly physically hurting other people who do not deserve it, didn't ask for it, um, simply by your short-sightedness or selfishness. 
so my hope is that landlords will, will follow the model of the landlord that I spoke to last night and the tenants will be responsible when they're here. And if that happens, I think we'll have the best possible summer in Brigantine. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And I think you brought up a really good point. Um, I think that I forgot too, is that uh, a number of the, the rental property owners really want to take steps to make things work. And I can tell you, you know, a number of council people have spoke with them and uh, they want to protect the community. They're a part of our community too. And, um, you know, I thank you, Rick, for, for reminding us of that. Um, if we could go to uh, our at-large councilman, Mike Reardon. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, all good comments, um, Rick, Vince. Um, it's great to see the seawall open, but what I want to talk about now is looking ahead to the future. Now that the governor announced yesterday that uh, he's going to allow expanded seating at the restaurant. So as anybody who's tuned in before the last several weeks knows that we've been planning probably at least a month ago for when this day came. And so we have just about all the restaurants and bars, seating plans, outdoor seating plans that they've um, uh, sent in. And uh, I know Jimmy Bennett and uh, some of the others uh, will be taking a good look at that. We're going to ease the restrictions. I can tell you there's going to be a lot of parking lot seating. Uh, but the plans that have been sent in, I can tell you, were carefully thought out. They seem very safe. And, and um, it'll help the businesses. And it'll be safe for the patrons to come on out and start to enjoy the summer. That's what, what, what we like to do here in Brigantine. So um, it's, been, uh, it's been great working with the Economic Development Committee. They've had input on it. They're all aware of what's going on. They've been notified to help out any other businesses also, besides the restaurants and bars, the businesses that uh, gift shops or uh, whatever it may be uh, that want to expand out on the sidewalk for the time being, just to get things rolling. So uh, City Manager Jimmy Bennett was great there. He got Fred Cerny, who's on the call here also, to get the uh, legal paperwork that needs to be filled out for that. Uh, it's a very simple process. So we're right now, currently, we're waiting for the state to get back to us on how it's going to work as far as allowing alcohol to be served in the city approved um, areas. And I see uh, city manager Jimmy Bennett raising his hand there. So Jimmy, uh, please help me out if you have some more in current info. Mike, uh, it literally just came in before the meeting started and he hasn't released the particulars, but the governor announced that there'll be a one-time uh, permit being uh, issued to licensees for premise extensions uh, subject to municipal approval. So sometime the next couple of days, probably before the 15th, uh, we will have uh, the paperwork in place or the licensees will have it to uh, serve their alcohol outside. Well, that is fabulous news. That's really tremendous because speaking to all of our local establishments from Laguna, Andres, Cellar 32, the Cove, St. George's, uh, and the other places there. That's uh, that's great news for them. So, listen, we were ahead of uh, we were ahead of th thinking ahead with that plan, and so I'd like to thank everybody who had input on that and helped out uh, working on it. Um, you know, I don't know if people realize <clears throat> the work and the meetings that were going on about everything else, including the short-term rentals. Um, we're up against it because public works, uh, they were very limited with only one person per vehicle with the, with the rules for the pandemic. Uh, the, the police, as we mentioned before, because the academy was closed, we weren't able to help hire summer help just yet. So uh, we, we were really working hard. There was a lot of meetings going on on how to prepare to open safely and responsibly. So <clears throat> because of that, uh, between the cove, the tennis courts, the pickleball courts, the, the seawall, all of those things were being talked about and worked on in meetings very, very hard. A lot of time was put into them. So uh, we, we, we had the um, health and safety of all the residents in, uh, in our thoughts, and uh, we worked hard on it. And as far as the short-term rentals are concerned, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we reached out, I know I reached out personally as part of the economic, uh, the chairman of the Economic Development Committee, I reached out to every single realtor office in Brigantine, 
reached out to the VRB community director who spoke very well in the, at the last meeting here. And uh, we've had, we had some very good uh, input back and forth from everyone. And um, the uh, rentals weren't officially opened uh, last weekend or whenever, but uh, from what I saw, I mean, it, w there was some confusion, I think, with the governor, if you had rentals beforehand and whatever happened uh, the last several weeks, weekends, uh, the island looked fun and it was great to see. So uh, hopefully the business will prosper. Um, and uh, so I want to thank, it was great working so far. It's been great working with all of our council members that ha at least agree on some things. Uh, Mike, I want to thank you for your comments. And two, I think an important thank you needs to go to Angela Reynolds, who is our Chamber of Commerce president. I know you and her have been working together to try to make sure that our business community is in a strong position. And I know some of her um, early conversations with you and some of the plans that you guys put together put the city in a position to take full advantage of the governor's decision to start reopening um, the businesses here on the island. So I'm gonna thank you guys for your forward thinking and thank you for going out. I know, I believe you personally went out to speak with most of the business owners uh, at least one or two times through this whole thing. So thank you, Mike. Yeah, Vince, that's Thanks. true. Um, thank you for bringing up uh, Angela Reynolds in the chamber. And also one other thing, because I see Jeanette Kessler on here, I want to thank her as well as the other green, uh, green team members that may be also here in the meeting today. Uh, I know, I know personally how much passion and, 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 and work goes into that also. So I know we're very, very thankful for everything you do. And especially this year is, is a little tough, but uh, we'll get over it and we'll get back to where we were at, but uh, we'll work together and hopefully uh, make this work with what we have to do right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, just want to thank everybody for everything they're doing, for all their patience. You know, trying to navigate a lot of this uh, new COVID-19 world is not easy. Um, all of our city departments have been working very, very hard to get the city in a good position to, to safely move forward, and we're doing that. Um, we're at the point now where uh, public works really has to do a majority of the work that needs to be completed. And one of the things that makes it hard is sometimes the decisions that are coming from the state level conflict with each other or they're just not reasonable to do. So one of the things we have done is to make sure that we take time to look at what we can do, move forward with the things we can move forward on. And if there's things we don't have clear guidance on, uh, we try to make sure that we get that clear guidance uh, to make sure that the city's on solid ground as we move forward. Uh, a couple good uh, announcements here. Um, as Paul Letiri has already announced earlier in the week, uh, the Brigantine Seawall has been reopened. You know, one of our goals for the Seawall is um, originally we had some, some restrictions where we could have opened it or partially opened it. But um, thanks to everybody's patience, we're in a position where the Seawall is now almost completely unrestricted and free access. So we thought that this was a good solid position. There's no point in doing work to redo work, um, to do work again. So now we were on solid ground, we moved that forward. Uh, right now, we're finalizing plans for the community center. We're going to uh, we're looking at a phased-in opening with a priority on getting it open for our senior citizens first. We have a lot of great programs down there that really benefit our senior citizen community, and we want to make sure that our senior citizens have a safe harbor where they can go and they can feel a little protected um, while we navigate through these. Um, I guess once the information, I think we need public works to take a look at it. Jim Mogan did some great work on that and we'll get that out to the rest of council for final review. Uh, we just wanted to make sure practically it worked before we move forward on those ideas. Uh, city Hall is moving forward with plans to reopen. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll have our city employees come back in to make sure that they get City Hall ready to be fully operational. Uh, once that is in place and our uh, public works have completed the required modifications, we will then begin to open it to the public. Our tennis, pickleball, and bocce ball courts are going to open this weekend. And here's the big one that everybody's going to be excited about. Uh, starting this Saturday, the Cove Recreational Area will be open again to vehicular traffic. So we're going to open up the cove again. Um, one of the things we have to keep in mind there that there has been significant erosion to the beach there and it might not hold as many people as it did before. This is something our uh, police and public works are going to monitor to make sure that we can maximize that area. 
Uh, so we want to thank people for their patience while, while we had it closed. Uh, we're also going to be reconfiguring the entrance um, to make sure that we, that our police and our beach fee have a better handle on the situation. Having the checkers way down in the cove area um, down further on the access road just doesn't work. Um, what ends up happening a lot of times is people who, let's say, aren't making good decisions, just speed past them, run past them, get away and disappear into the crowd. So we're going to move that back up onto the street end. And where it was in the past, this will give us a little better handle on the situation to make sure that the people who are making good decisions down there can continue to enjoy it, you know, as, as much as we want to enjoy it ourselves. Um, due to the road construction that's going on, I believe from the South Jersey gas project, we have a lot of roads that have been kind of torn up. We've got delayed in those projects because of all the COVID delays. Um, normally we have a moratorium in Brigantine where we shut down road construction as of Memorial Day weekend at the recommendation of our city engineer and our city manager. We're going to extend those projects a couple more weeks. We just don't want to leave the roads unpaved and in, this, in the shape they're in. Uh, one of the things that's tied to that, though, is the Brigantine Triathlon. This year, we will be canceling the Brigantine Triathlon. Right now, the road conditions are not safe. Um, I, I cycle almost every day, and some of those roads right now are very challenging that are a part of that path, and to have you know hundreds of people out there biking just isn't a safe decision right now. So we need to get those roads in good shape, and we need to err on the side of caution. Um, one of the big things and topics here in Brigantine has been uh, condo and community pools. Um, we are working to try to get those back open. I uh, had a uh, good call with the governor's office last night to try to get the governor to give some guidance and to, to make some decisions on this. And one of the things that's really important is it's not just a, an in, uh, it's not just a situation that impacts Brigantine. This is something that impacts all of our shore communities all over South Jersey and a number of the mayors up and down the Jersey coast um, are talking to the governor, asking about the importance of having those pools back open and letting at least the condo associations themselves make the determination on whether or not they as a group feel safe having the pools open or not. We're also working on a plan uh, we have our Brigantine Aquatic Center have submitted uh, a very strong plan for reopening to the city. We reviewed it. We supported 100%. We forwarded it uh, to the governor's office and to our Senator Chris Brown uh, with a letter of support um, asking them to look into it and to give some guidance and to give them the ability to open um, under the plan that they put forward. We look forward to getting an answer back from the governor. And uh, one last thing, I really want to thank our freeholder, Amy Gatto. Uh, we were in a situation for a while where it was taking too long to get information from the governor's office. There's a lot of decisions that need to be made. Um, I reached out to her. She uh, got some of her connections together and got us a direct contact into the governor's office so we can at least speak to people who are in decision-making abilities and can give us real information in real time so that we as a community and we as a council can make the best possible decisions and move forward for our city. So I really want to thank freeholder Amy Gatto for all of her efforts to you know, help Brigantine, um, you know, everything she's always done as a freeholder here. Uh, that's all I have for today. I'd like to turn it over to our city manager, Jim Bennett. Uh, thanks, Vince. Uh, you pretty much covered everything um, that we needed to update on. Uh, the only thing I would like to add uh, with regards to the Cove, uh, like you said, um, there may be uh, less space available because of the erosion in that center section. Um, and as we saw last weekend, uh, the jetty uh, was temporarily shut down. Uh, the police instituted a one-off and one-on uh, policy. Um, they will be doing that again. Uh, they'll be checking again this weekend at the Cove and the Jetty. Uh, so it is possible uh, that it will happen again. Just want everybody to, to be ready for it. Uh, it lasted about 20 minutes. Uh, we, a couple of people came off, the beach opened back up, they didn't have any more problems. Uh, and that seems to be the best way to handle it. Um, with regards to the lifeguards, uh, until the full season starts, which is the, uh, the weekend of the 20th, uh, just a reminder that lifeguards are only going to be at Roosevelt Boulevard, 16th Street, and 38th Street on the weekends. Uh, they will not be there during the week. Um, and hopefully we can clear up a little confusion here um, with our, our beach tags, uh, when they're required, beach uh, 4 by 4 permits, parking permits, things like that. Uh, the beach fee office is now open 9 to 5, uh, Wednesday through Sunday. They're closed Monday and Tuesday. 
Uh, you can buy your beach tags, parking permits, and four-wheel drive permits there. You can also purchase your beach tags online uh, with the Vipli app. You do not have to report to uh, the community center to get your tags unless you're a senior citizen or a veteran because you have to produce ID. Um, the price increase for the four-wheel drive permits will be uh, taking effect on the June 14th. So Saturday, June 13th will be the last day to purchase uh, the $200 four-wheel drive permit. After that, it goes up. Um, also, uh, with regards to the permits, uh, effective this Friday, as a reminder, we gave everybody an extension. Um, all four-wheel drive vehicles on the beaches must have a 2020 permit. The 2019 carryover time uh, is over, effective Friday morning. Uh, and also Friday, uh, the beach tags and parking permits will uh, rise to their normal summer pricing. Uh, and as a reminder, the uh, North End Observation Tower and parking area are open. Uh, we ask folks to, uh, to try and use that parking area as much as possible to alleviate congestion in the neighborhoods uh, and maybe uh, help us keep that North Beach open uh, and a little safer. And that's all I have, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Vince, could I just touch on one thing that you spoke about just before yeah, sure. regarding the, well, the aquatic center? Uh, I spoke to Rob, and actually, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, uh, regarding the serious situation she's in. And I know all of us, uh, our hearts are out there. It's such an establishment that's been there for a significant amount of time. Uh, there is something that was just updated June 1st from NewJersey.com regarding Governor Murphy. And I guess it would tie into, you know, I know you said uh, a letter was sent up to the governor. Uh, maybe it just gives a bigger overview if anybody wants to look at that regarding uh, uh, public or privately owned pools open to the public, as is the case with the Aquatic Center. And um, also there's a large group of uh, high school swimmers, I believe it was, that have petitioned the governor also to get it going. Unfortunately, they've been like lumped in, the pool's been lumped in with the gyms, and uh, they thought that they, maybe they were gonna see something on, I don't know if it was June 15th or 20th. However, nothing really occurred. So hopefully they remedied that situation ASAP. So thank you, Vince. Sure, thank you, Dennis. I'd like to open it up to public comment at this time. Hello, Deputy Mayor. Hello. You state your name and address for the record. Uh, Jim, I think Maria Handel is trying to reach us. Okay, uh, my apologies. I had to uh, mute off my other phone. Maria, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Maria Handel, 1300 Varden Circle. First of all, thank you all for all the hard work you're doing. We know you're working hard and we appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of people that can't get on the Zoom, I'm sure you're aware, and they're texting and, and you know, on social media. Um, the first thing everyone, I'm kind of writing down what they're asking. The first thing is um, what you already said, open the aquatic center, try and get our kids back to swimming, okay? Um, Chamber of Commerce members are asking if you're gonna start opening the shops. I know that's the govern governor's call, but I'm currently in Cape May County and I can tell you the shops are open down here. They're open. They're allowing two to five people in at a time. You have to wear a mask. All shops, any kind of shop. They're also open in LBI. I'm gonna leave that there. And last but not least, on my husband's request, please open the fields. Please open the football field, the baseball field, even if it's with some kind of only 10 people at a time up there, the hockey courts. Um, our kids need to run around a little bit. And thank you for everyone that helped with the non-Veterans Day ceremony allowing us to go up there and have some kind of remembrance thank you deputy mayor yeah i think that um for uh non-essential retail stores i know the governor i believe has given permission to resume business 
uh, with limited capacities on June 15th. I don't know that we as a governing body have the authority to override the governor's decision. I know that a number of businesses, and actually they, they've been communicating and working with Congressman Van Drew's office on this, and we've actually reached out to him too. But one of the things that was relayed to Congressman Van Drew was that a number of businesses were going to, on their own, choose to do a June 1st opening and roll their dice with whatever action the governor or the state of New Jersey would take. Uh, one of the things we, we can never advocate for people to violate the law or violate the decisions of the governor, you know, but people make the choices that are best for them and then what comes of it comes of it. Uh, we did speak with the governor's office last night about um, opening up some of the recreational areas. I know that there's been some guidance on resuming non-contact sports. So I think that can come out uh, when we talked with the governor's office last night. One of the big concerns is with, um, as people resume regular sports, and literally they said if they're in a sport where they're going to physically touch each other, they're not going to permit that right now. So we're trying to get a little bit more clear guidance on how we maybe open up some of those fields or open something up. So we're hoping to have some information, uh, hopefully in the next like week. So uh, they did say that they would get back to us and get back to all the South Jersey mayors on those decisions. Vince, um, the NJ... SEA, SIAA, the Sports Authority for High School Sports said June 30th for um, a lot of the sports to start, right? right. Yeah. But we're and looking for fields, not for like organized sports, just for the kids to run, to get out there to, you know, Absolutely. run, run, walk, please. Yes, anything. Okay. Let me, um, I think maybe council should take some time. We'll talk with the manager and make sure uh, public works is in a position, but if, if we can start to open those things back up, um, I, I would definitely support it as well as a uh, number of council members. I know one of the things that was specifically asked last night was playgrounds and the governor's office said absolutely not on playgrounds, but they would consider opening up some of the other areas. So give us a little bit of time and um, if we can move forward on that, we will. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Uh, Nicole Flores, Nicole Flores, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you very much. I just want to firstly say thank you guys for doing everything that you have to protect us in the community. I work at Legacy Vacation Club on 14th Street. And our question is, will the occupancy be allowed to be at 100% or will, be, will we be required to have a limited occupancy? And if so, what will it be? The occupancy for the vacation club? Yes. Um, I'll have to ask our attorney. I don't know that we would regulate occupancy right now, but I don't know what the specific guidelines on there is. Uh, Mr. Cerny on the line? Uh, yes, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Fred's here. The question is as to what facility? Legacy Vacation Club, you said that we could have short-term rentals, but I didn't know if we could have 100% occupancy or if we needed to be at a lower occupancy. Okay. The, the short-term rental issue is at this point within the jurisdiction of the municipality. I say that because other folks who have parallel questions may be asking questions that are still subject to the, the governor's jurisdiction. Uh, the way that this residency issue has been structured, uh, council has authorized the emergency management coordinator and the city manager to be the administrators of this program. And as I understand council's action today, council is saying, let's reinstate the short-term occupancy. And I think in doing that, that is, the question you're asking would have to go to those who are administering on the ground, that being the emergency management coordinator and the city manager. I would assume in answering your question, they will look to the same kind of factors that had originally brought us to the point where we needed the restriction. So if it appears that 100% occupancy would somehow violate any of the management uh, techniques for the pandemic, they might want to do some limitation. But I think you're dealing with a fluid situation with the intention of anyone to permit this to grow and get back to full occupancy as quickly as possible, subject to reasonable steps. Having said all that and recognizing that the manager is here with us, uh, if Jim has any thoughts as to how we're going to administer this prospectively, uh, it might be good to have him share that.
I guess the question I would ask, is there any prohibition or legal reason we would need to not allow them to operate at 100% occupancy? From my point of view, as a legal point, no. And then I would ask, um, I guess, uh, Jim, is there anything from uh, OEM that would suggest that we need to limit that occupancy? No, uh, the legacy resorts and uh, the La Samana across the street, uh, they are for the most part privately owned and timeshares. Uh, they're not rented out like hotel rooms. I know that they had in the past some rooms that rented out as hotel rooms, uh, but as far as we were able to, to learn over the last few weeks, they did not uh, fall under. We, we do still rent as a hotel. Okay. That's uh, we, we couldn't find anything where it came to specifically a, a building like yours or the La Samana. So okay, perfect. From that perspective, you're fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Robin. Robin from the uh, from the pool. It's your turn, you're up. There we go. Hi guys. First Hello. of all, I'd like to thank Debbie Mayor, uh, Sarah and, and Dennis Haney and Maria for their support. And thank you very much, Deputy Mayor, for um, being an advocate for our business and knowing what we do uh, for the community and you understanding that. I think we're one of the largest employers on the island come summer, yeah. as well as one of the biggest commercial taxpayers on the island that has been stifled at not being able to operate for three months. Come June 22nd, when uh, salons and nail sal uh, hair salons and nail salons will be, be able to open, we will be the only business on the island not operational. And I don't know how much longer we can hang on. Um, and it breaks my heart. So I just want to thank you and thank everyone for their support. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Robin. And God bless you, Robin. I know it's, it's a tough situation. I think um, the frustrating part is you have a really solid plan that will protect people and you're getting lumped in with the state of New Jersey. And this is really why local decision and local power needs to be returned because you should be able to operate, you should be able to move forward and you shouldn't be held back because there's issues in other parts of the state. And this is something that is being advocated by every mayor in South Jersey right now. We're gonna stay on top of this issue and try to get you back open and do everything within our power. And you have a lot of good people in the community um, and a lot of good people at the state level who, who love you and support you and are behind you and are willing to fight for you. You're welcome, Robin. Uh, Susan, Susan Levan, you have a question, you're up. Sorry for that, it just was froze. Um, I um, had sent a letter to the um, or the uh, Brigantine Farmers Market Committee this morning, and I was asked to share, which Chrissy, I believe, just shared it in the chat, but I can um, read it. Um, and this is basically to the Brigantine Farmers Market community. The work that is involved in farming is substantial. Having prepackaged, pre ordered product would only add to the workday. In all towns, local businesses are open. ShopRite, Acme, they're just to name the large stores. Um, the Brigantine Fresh Rate posted a photo on Facebook advertising their product displayed out on the street where consumers could come up, pick it up, and purchase it, which pretty much is what we do at the farmer's market. 
Um, it is not fair to put such overbearing limitations on farmers who need to plan, pick, pack, separate, load, ship to the market, not mention grow the product. All of this the day before spending their entire Saturday waiting for fewer customers to arrive. Knowing the city wants to put so much restriction on the farmer's market will destroy this year's potential. Consumers want to buy local fresh product during the pandemic and the restrictions will prevent this from happening. Brigantine Market thrives on new consumers coming in weekly to buy products, which would be your renters. Uh, these people will not be able to contact vendors prior to each week with enough regularity to make it profitable for the farmers. In cities and towns where a majority of consumers are full-time residents, this method could work, but it, in Brigantine, we believe it may not. These restrictions would not be beneficial for both the farmers and the community. Please consider the added burden our, to our labor-intensive job that we happily do to provide for your community. So I'm not just speaking on my behalf, it's for the other farmers. There's so much that goes into what we do and our product is a commodity and it does not have a sustained life, you know, life, excuse me, lifespan. So for every week we keep pushing this off and pushing it back, this product is going to waste. So if we could please consider not waiting until the 20th, like I, I know that earlier you mentioned the 20th of June possibly, um, if we could execute this sooner, um, it would be beneficial for the community, your community, our, our businesses as well. Uh, Susan, thank you very much for sharing the letter. And, you know, I think it's important for the community as a whole to, to hear what's going on, to hear the importance of moving this idea forward. And um, where we are right now is that a lot of the restrictions that have been placed on farmers markets do not come from Brigantine. There's a lot of restrictions that have really limited markets right now. And I know there are some communities that have full walk-up markets with limitations, and there are some communities that are doing drive through markets. One of the things that uh, Brigantine is really trying to do is make sure that we can get that market up, that we can get it rolling. You know, we, we looked at a phased-in plan. We were ready to roll with that phased-in plan to get the market started. Excuse me. <clears throat> But based on the new guidance and guidelines that have come down and the recommendations of the Farmers Market Committee, um, the recommendation was not to move in with a phased in plan to start to look at how we do um, a full walk up market. You know, we have two challenges with that. One, there's a lot of people in the community who are still fearful that having large groups of people congregating together will help uh, spread the disease or put people at risk. So part of that is easing that fear. The other thing is having a location and having a place that we can manage that, you know, having the park right, or having the market at Hahnemann Park right now does not give um, a, a good setup to having the market. Um, one of the most important things about our farmer's market and probably what makes it most special is the experience of going to the market. It's not just about buying fresh produce. You can buy fresh produce anywhere. Coming to our market is very, very special. A big part of that is the volunteers who work there and the life they bring to that market. Um, the crafters, the vendors, the kids' activities, the whole experience of riding your bike there, getting a cup of coffee and walking around. And that, that's somewhere we really want to get to. Unfortunately, as a community, we're not there yet. You know, this is still a fluid process and we are still working. I know um, Jeanette is working very hard. Karen Bue is working very hard, the whole committee. And, and in fact, I've asked to come out to look at the location of where they um, are recommending to have the park, um, how we can make it work, and how we can get that up and running. So that is one of the goals of what it is we want to do. And, you know, for each community, you have to make the decisions that are best for your community. We try to look at what everyone does. We try to see what works, what doesn't work, and then what's a good fit for Brigantine. And we are still in that process. And I think a big part of it is why there's been no final decision made is because we don't want to be locked into an idea that may or may not work. So since um, this morning, I know the Farmers Market Committee had reached out to uh, Councilwoman View, and uh, uh, Karen spoke with me a little bit about the request and what we can do to move forward. You know, I said, hey, look, if, if there's a better way, let's look at that better way so we can move forward and get the market back to that, that loving experience that everybody enjoys. 
So thank you for sharing your letter and hopefully we'll have some more information on that soon. And I, I do have to say, I do. Address? Sorry. Can you speak Susan name Lavari. My name is Susan Lavari. I am a vendor at your farmer's market. I am in Buna, New Jersey. But I do, what, the one thing I do want to say is I am involved in other farmer's markets and they, the process, they do have the open, um, the open aspect as you, you come up and you purchase your product. Um, the one, certain ones had the order one, but they started in March. So now they're transitioning into, again, the open market. But we are safe because we are outdoors. Anything we're doing at this, at our farmer's markets, is no different than what we're doing when we go to the grocery store. We can walk in the grocery store, as you said, we can pick our own produce, our own product, we can go through the store, get our own meats, and then go to a register. Being outside is the safest place to be. So as long as we've been doing this um, sanitizing and face masks for months now, we all know how to take care of ourselves. So I'm not sure where we would be having such a, a conflict. Uh, sorry, I didn't know. Karen, were you going to comment? Go ahead, Karen. As far as we know, at this point, we are working toward a walk-up market on, hopefully starting on June 20th. We can't start prior to that because the governor is lifting his restrictions on the 15th. And then the soonest Saturday would be the 20th. And that's pretty much the way we're going to go with it. Okay. And so I'm going to uh, scan through the list here and see if anybody else wants to, to have a comment. Perfect. Thank you. I don't see anyone. Uh, let's give them another minute if they want to uh, unmute themselves. Go ahead and give your name and address and, and feel free to speak. Hi, I had a question. It's Amanda McNally of uh, 331 41st Street and then also uh, at the Islander. So first of all, thank you guys. I'm so thrilled to hear that uh, short term rental ban is lifted. Um, I know I've kind of been a squeaky wheel with my questions about pools. Our HOA is a little bit challenging um, and they've insinuated that pools might not be open even if the government and city council allow that. So I just wanted to better understand if that decision uh, would be up to the HOA um, if the government, if the, the state and the city allow the opening of community pools. Um, that's part one question. And part two is our HOA has also closed the laundry facility on site at our complex at the Islander um, due to, they said, COVID. I, I haven't seen that in any of the state executive orders. Is that allowed and what can be done to prevent that? Uh, Jim, did you want to address that or I saw you raise your hand, so. Yeah, um, the, with regards to the pools, Amanda, uh, once the governor releases it, that's up to the, uh, the association. Uh, and there was nothing in any of the executive orders that I've read recently uh, that dealt with, with laundry. Um, again, I think it's, it's your HOA that's uh, uh, setting these rules up. That's probably something you wanna take to the board. But once the state gives us or puts out the okay to open the community pools, we're not gonna stand in anybody's way. They're, you know, they're on private property and, and you and any association will have to police yourselves. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate the response. Thank you. Are there any other council comment or any other uh, public comments? Yes, uh, this is uh, Jim Mackey. I can't see uh, for some reason my audio, my video is not coming up. But uh, first of all, uh, thank you for all your uh, hard work. I'd like to uh, thank uh, uh, the city manager, uh, Bennett, and the uh, council for allowing the, uh, the American Legion to have their, uh, their annual uh, Memorial Day uh, 
ceremony wreath laying. I know it was a little different uh, this year, but I want to thank uh, uh, Public Works and John Doring for uh, being there and also all the uh, wreath layers. And uh, not sure what happened with the, uh, the time, but, uh, you know, uh, as most of you know, uh, uh, we had one shortly after 11. And then uh, because of the, uh, the, the folks that showed up, including uh, Councilman uh, Haney and Councilman Blukri, uh there were so many people that were there at the 12 o'clock, uh, for the 12 o'clock ceremony, including a 95-year-old uh, World War II veteran, uh, we all know him, uh, or most of us do, Mr. Ralph Williams, and also uh, a grieving mother who was, uh, who was there to pay uh, respects and remember her 19-year-old uh, daughter, who three years ago was remembered at, uh, at one of our ceremonies. I'm not sure who, uh, who was there at the time. I think uh, Mayor Gunther had recognized the mother, and uh, she was there. So not sure how the whole time thing changed. In the paper, it said uh, the time was changed to, sub, uh, to sort of uh, uh, stifle the amount of people that were going to show up which, uh, you know, sort of, I didn't understand why all of a sudden it got changed from 11, from, from, uh, from uh, 12 to 11, but it did. And uh, a lot of people showed up at 11 and a lot of people showed up at, at, uh, at noon. And uh, if we had not conducted a second service, it would have been a great, uh, great disservice to the people and the residents who showed up to pay their respects as well, it would have shown very poorly on the, uh, on the American Legion, which I've been a proud member since 1991. And it would have also looked very bad for the city. So I want to thank uh, Councilman uh, uh, Haney and uh, DeLucre for showing up. Uh, it went very well. And uh, it was a spur of the moment thing. It was not pre-planned. But uh, sometimes you just got to take the bull by the horns and do what's right. And I want to thank, uh, again, thank the city for uh, providing the police and, uh, and, the, uh, and the wreaths. So uh, thank you so much. Jim, can you, can you give your address? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, 1325 Varden Road. Oh, by the way, because the ball thank fields, you. yeah, also because the, uh, the ball fields have been uh, closed for all these months, even though uh, during that period, uh, people weren't allowed to uh, uh, golf, but they were. Uh, my family was forced, not forced, it was our own choice, but we put our own uh, batting cage in because our children, uh, uh, that sport is very important to our, uh, our children. It's important to our community. And uh, I still don't understand how you can have a golf course open and you can't hit a ball and a bat uh, to uh, have a ball and a bat and uh, hit you and play with your kids on a, uh, on a ball diamond that's uh, 50, 60 feet away from each other. There is no contact uh, with baseball unless you're running the bases and there's no running the bases. It's just practice and it should have been open weeks ago. Thank you. Amen, Jim. And uh, Jim, thank you for your uh, outstanding efforts the other day. It was a pleasure and honor for me to be there. And I know Rick, I would think he, I know he feels the same way. And uh, to celebrate uh, uh, the, the, the ultimate sacrifice and the dedication of everybody. And thank you for everybody. Yeah. Our service yeah. people that is. And yeah. thank you for everyone who showed up. Yes, thank you. And Jen, I want to thank you and Maria and um, all our local veterans organizations to make sure that um, our Memorial Day services were able to continue um, at that time. You know, one of the things that's frustrating is you have such an important day of remembrance within our country that uh, many communities weren't able to be a part of. So I want to thank you guys for your efforts in keeping that going. Uh, as for the time change, um, I think it's important to note that uh, because of the restrictions from the state of New Jersey, that um, the, the city itself was not really able to participate or host the event this year. Uh, my understanding of the, of the services and what was, I guess, conveyed to myself and the rest of council was that this was going to be a, a small private ceremony hosted by the local veterans organizations. 
and that um, it was at the request of the local veterans organizations uh, because of the limitations on crowds to, to not have large crowds of people there. So um, obviously I always support people's decisions. People need to make the best decisions that they feel comfortable with and if people felt comfortable enough joining that is their prerogative to do so and many people did. You know, but as it was for the time change, um, it was nothing that came from the city as to what time it was or advertised from the city. That was not something that was in our control. But one of the things I, I really want to thank you and the organizers of that event was your, your fluidity. You know, you guys had your, your first event as you had scheduled. And then when, when people showed up and there was a desire to be a part of that special moment, you guys made it happen. And that's the strength of our community, our, our love for our veterans and our ability to make changes on the fly to make sure that uh, people can be included in something that's so important. So I want to thank everybody who was involved there in that for making that work and commemorating that special day. Well, I appreciate that, Deputy Mayor. Uh, the thing is, uh, when they did have it uh, for some reason, when it was uh, sort of, let's hurry up and, uh, and get this over with, uh, myself, Paul Robinson, and uh, Paul Malfitano, uh, said to uh, said to the other legionnaires that we were going to stay because we knew that it was published at it was published in the paper that, that it was going to be at twelve and uh, so if uh, like I said if we hadn't stayed uh, it would have been uh, it would have been a very embarrassing moment not only for the uh, uh, for the American Legion but also very embarrassing uh, for the city it was published you know even. Uh, Emmett didn't know how the time had gotten changed, you know, and uh, neither did some of the other uh, wreath layers, you know. So, you know, it's water under the bridge. The thing is that, uh, uh, like I said, we, uh, we, we took the bull by the horns. We, we, uh, we looked at the uh, situation, but there were more people there at noon than there were at the, uh, at the 11 o'clock uh, ceremony. And like I said, there was a, uh, a grieving mother, I think, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Haney can attest to that, that, uh, you know, her daughter was, uh, you know, killed over in Okinawa three years ago in a tragic uh, 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 accident in a, in a waterfall over there. And she's, you know, she, that was, that was her moment. Okay. So the thing is, had we left, uh, she would have been there left all alone and about 40 or 50 other uh, people there from the community would have been baffled. And uh, like, who's in charge here? And I'm not sure, to be honest with you, who was in charge that day. All I know is I was in charge of getting the wreath. That's all I know. And the thing is, uh, again, want to thank uh, you know Public Works for uh, supplying the uh, the handle for the flag, and and the police and the fire, you know, who uh, who, who uh, contributed the uh, the wreaths. And it all went it all went well. But uh, it is we can't have. Uh, hopefully, we'll never have a situation like this again. But, uh, you know, when, when someone changes the time, uh, someone's got to let the people who are sort of involved know about it, you know, and there were city people there at 11. So somebody, you know, it's published at 12. So the police were there at 11. Mr. Doring was there at 11. I don't know how it, uh, yeah, I was there because of the wreath. I was picking them up from, uh, from uh, Bella Rosa at 1030. That's the only reason I was there early. Otherwise, I would have missed it too. So I just want to, you know, this is why communication is, is so important. And, uh, and then in the newspaper, it said it was uh, basically a, a fast one was pulled in order to keep the, uh, you know, to keep the crowd down. That's what was in the paper. Okay. That's what was in the, printed in the paper that it was changed to keep the, to suppress the crowd. That's what was said. OK, so I don't know who pulled the trigger on that one. I'm just letting you know that it, it shouldn't happen again. That's all. And that's in the paper. If I could uh, say what that. paper was that? Uh, uh, it was in the uh, Brigantine Times. OK, if I could just say thank you, Jim. Also, I'd like to thank you for what you did and the Legion and the VFW. Uh, certainly. Um, We've uh, always been supportive of veterans and especially those that have paid the ultimate price. Uh, I think we've uh, always gone above and beyond uh, paying our respects to uh, the veterans on the island here. And uh, one thing I want to say as 
since I didn't, I didn't uh, realize, you know, uh, I watched it live and I want to compliment uh, the polka, polka ambassador for his trumpet playing of taps and, uh, and it was very, very well. And uh, thank you, Frank. I know you're on here, Frank. Thank you. That's it. And, and also what happened, uh, again, thank you, Frank, because He's when the crowd, time. yes? Five minutes are up. Sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks, Frank. And hey, Jim, if you're still there, I just want to thank you for that uh, heartfelt comfort that you gave that young mother. Uh, that was very moving and she needed that. So thank you. Well, you know what? Uh, masks were in that time and in that situation. You don't worry about getting sick because you know what? That mother needed that comfort. Amen. So, but thank you, uh, Dennis. You're welcome, Jim. Thank you. And I think it's just important to note that um, the statements that were made in the newspaper did not come from the city. Um, I don't think any member of council uh, gave a press release or an update on times. Um, and I don't think the statements after the fact were that came from the city. To my knowledge, I don't think anyone here said that. I don't think there was any um, push to suppress the crowds. And I think we've been very clear that people should have the choices they have in their lives. If they wanted to be there, they should choose to be there. But I think the most important thing and is that we, one, that, that, that you and the leadership of our veterans organizations were able to make it work. You guys were able to be there and meet the needs of the community. And I think that's really the important thing that was there. Um, I know going forward, um, you know, obviously not in this COVID-19 world, but as we go forward, there's better organization, there's better ways to get things done. But, you know, given the, the situation we were in, I really want to thank all of the organizers who were involved in that and making that work and the representation we had um, from city council. You know, I know that uh, Councilman DeLuca was there. I know De uh, Councilman Dennis Haney was there and actually um, got a lot of reports and compliments from how well that uh, Councilman Haney spoke and uh, represented the city. You know, we, we have a good team and that team extends beyond council to, to our community members. So I just want to thank everybody for their efforts and making that happen because it was a lot of work to pull that off in a short amount of time. All right, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Thank you also, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. I don't see anybody else, uh, Vince. All right, so at this time, we're going to close council comments, or sorry, I keep calling it council comments, but close uh, public comment. Um, are there any, I guess, final council comments? Uh, hey, Vince, uh, somebody was reaching out for me saying that they're in the uh, medical field, and they said uh, they wanted me to, they didn't speak up here. Maybe they have problems, uh, technically speaking. They said uh, they want me to uh, comment or speak about uh, my comments that I made about when I spoke earlier. Uh, that uh, I, I have no like medical background and what I was saying was reckless and danger, dangerous. Uh, I don't have to be, I'm just answering this person, this young, whoever this person might be, I don't have to be a medical expert to express my feelings based on data, studies, expertise, statistics, and public statements made by other such experts. Um, I encourage everyone just to uh, educate themselves about COVID-19 from all sides, from left to right, the middle, whatever, whatever media you look at, uh, you know, whatever you go online, whatever news channels you look at. I myself would also encourage people, I'll give a couple names just from some of my perspectives, Dr. Scott Atlas, uh, Dr. David Katz, uh, uh, Dr. Scott Atlas is from Stanford, Dr. David Katz from Yale. These are medical doctors and uh, epidemiologists. Uh, also, I believe there's Dr. Uh, John Ioannidis is also from Stanford. Dr. Ben David, his last name is one word. Uh, brilliant minds, brilliant people. Get, go out there and get a feel for everything and get to and put your facts together. But I have a duty, this is a democracy and I have plenty of constituents who want businesses to open, who want, who want the short-term rental ban lifted early, um, but I, they want their voices heard and they feel I can tell they're on the same page as me. So that is what I said and I'm totally, I'm totally entitled to say that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, at this time, I'd like to, I guess, is there a motion to close the meeting? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today for our uh, council meeting. I'd like to thank everybody for their input and their help through this time. And I look forward to seeing you all at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Here. Go for I have a quick question. Anyone know where the Facebook group is?